Hello class, Professor Hatter here. Today, we're going to start a new journey. We're going to start a new lecture series, if you will. This lecture series is going to be a history lesson for all of you. It's going to go over the history of my hat collection. This is a video series that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's a cold day out. It's Thursday, January 31st, like the coldest, second coldest day in Chicago history. I had a house to myself and finally wanted to get this video series started. So today we're going to go over a few of the hats that I have in my collection. Now you're thinking, Professor, I've seen most of your hats already. What other hats do you really have? Well, there's a bunch of hats that you've never seen before, probably. Probably never seen my Grand Canyon hat, my New York hat, my Dude hat. That one's a special one. Or my Thinking hat. I have non-cap hats in my that I count in my collection that you've never seen before, like my fedoras and two bucket hats. So there's a ton to go through. If you've noticed on my social media names, monikers, you see I write it out at Prof Hatter 57. By the way, go follow me on social media. More of Instagram, Twitter I kind of use here and there. 57 I put at the end because when I started this channel back in June of 2018, I had 57 hats at the time I started. So it was kind of like a little measuring tool for me, how much I would have grown during my time on this channel with my hat collection. So I started this channel out when I had 57 hats in my collection. So now you'll get to see hats 1 through 57 in their entirety. I've shared a few hats with you before, some of my Chicago Cubs hats, some of my other Chicago related hats, some college hats, but you haven't seen all of them. Of course I will be doing in-depth analysis and storytelling. Of course I'm a storyteller. I love telling stories, especially about hats. Because each hat is important to me. I'm going to be going through all of my hats. Even the one that you've seen and I've kind of reviewed during my hat unveiling videos in the last few months that I've had the channel. So today it's going to be a great day. We're going to start a new video series. So I want you to stay tuned for all of this. It's going to be a great history lesson, especially if you've been following the channel for quite some time. And it's just another guy talking about his hats. So today, get out your textbooks, your notebooks, your pencils, whatever else you need, your coffee to stay awake. But I'm sure the adrenaline of going through hats will keep you awake. We're going to get class started right now, and I hope you join. Class is in session. We are going to get into part one today, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So today it's time for a history lesson. So I'm going to use my hat inventory list on Google Docs, and that's how I'm going to go through the hats. I ordered my hats in chronological order of when I got them, and that's how this video is going to go. Now another note. There were four hats that I disincluded in my hat collection for certain reasons, and I will go over those because I haven't sold them off yet. But when we get to those videos, you'll see, you'll see them. And I'll go over the explanation of those. But I'm going to start off with um, uh, my number one hat which is probably not the first hat I got, but the first two hats are the most important to me. And they're both from my grandparents on my mom's side, so I wanted to go over those in this video and share the importance behind it. So that's kind of like the general outline of what I'm going to do with these videos, go in chronological order after the first two of when I obtain the hats. All right, so let's get going. Let's look at some hats. Starting with the first hat I have, it comes from my Grandma Nelson. It is my thinking cap. I want to show it to you. This is my thinking cap. 
my mom had something similar to this kind of a hat. It was a uh, hat that uh, came from one of the guys in the family, and my grandma gave it to my mom. It was her thinking cap in middle school. So I had my own thinking cap since second grade. And I don't wear this hat too often because it's small. It's really, really small in my head. It's also uh, deteriorating. It's uh, got some holes on the top here, or on the back. If you uh, can't see like that. It's got uh, holes on the side. There's some, some daylight, and that's not good. On the inside, the uh, band on the inside is uh, falling apart. It's coming off, and some little strands. So I don't wear it too often. But as you can see, it's still a nice hat. Still an old time hat. Nice fedora. Nice kind of a brown. I almost want to say it's like milk chocolate. It reminds me of like a chocolate lab, to be honest. Kind of on a lighter shade. And the ribbon around is kind of like a tan. Kind of a dirty tan in a way. And then the bow on the side here. Like I said, it doesn't fit. I got a, I got a big head. I wear seven and a half, sometimes a small seven and five eighths. But this feels like a uh, seven and a quarter, maybe seven and an eighth, maybe. But I don't wear it too often anymore. As I said, it's deteriorating, and I don't want to stress it out any more than it needs to be. And I only wear it when it was a finals week for me or midterms during college and I would use it for good luck and I graduated so uh, thank you Grandpa Huxold great Grandpa Huxold because this was on my grandma's side this was her dad's hat her dad was born in 1895 and he didn't start wearing this hat she said until he was in his 30s so about 1925 ish 1930 so this hat's been around for almost a century and the brand is Brent, and that's all I could really find about it. George Brent is the name that keeps appearing. He was an actor back in the early, early days of Hollywood. And uh, the other kind of phrase that keeps popping up when I researched this hat was Stenson Fedora. So kind of a Stenson, George Brent style it was called. I'm going to provide a... Uh, poster picture, kind of a print ad of what it, it looked like back in its heyday, kind of the uh, ad to buy the hat. My grandma told me that the story was that Grandpa Huxold would wear this every day to church, every Sunday. On the pews, they had little like hat racks underneath the pews where, I mean, all the men would wear fedoras like these back in the day. So they put it underneath the pew, underneath their seat, and it kind of hung right above the floor. So that way it didn't actually sit on the floor, it didn't sit next to you, you know, someone could sit on it, like sometimes my family does with my hats when I bring them to church. So, kind of a cool little uh, thing that they did to accommodate for the fashion of the day. So, this hat is really important to me, and this is why it's my, uh, it's counted as number one in the collection. Let's move on to another uh, Nelson hat from the family. Moving on to hat number two. Hat number two comes from my grandpa Nelson indirectly. I went over the story behind this hat in a previous hat video where I went over my winter hats when it was cold out. And this hat is pretty important for the cold, although it doesn't help too much, to be honest. But it comes from my parents who gave him the hat and it he said it didn't fit him well it was too small for his head so he kind of gave it back and uh that's just how the story goes my mom tells me and it's just been sitting down in the basement with all the other costume uh items in a bin for years and uh eighth grade i found it and i picked it up and i just started wearing it ever since other than my thinking cap this is probably my number one hat that I wear all the time because it means a lot for me to wear, you know, something that was 
meant for my grandpa. My parents bought it in Germany when they were on a uh, vacation before uh, they had me. Really highly sentimental value for me. Uh, also that Grandpa Nelson isn't around anymore. So it means a lot to wear the, what I call the grandpa hat. So can see the details. I didn't do too much research about the brand of it because the uh, tag on the inside is pretty faded. And uh, all it really tells me is it is about, geez, I can't even read the how much wool and polyester it is. But, uh, oh, it looks like it's uh, about 60% wool at least. And as you can see, nice uh, wool cap to keep you warm. So this is called an ivy cap. And it's meant to have the uh, brim in the front here to kind of block the sun a bit. Some of the snow and the snowy conditions. And it's meant to uh, keep your head warm and kind of be a fashionable winter hat. Like the fedora before, that's kind of a spring summertime hat that you wear outside. This is for the winter time and you're trying to be fashionable. Now this, as you can tell by the pattern, isn't all that fashionable. It's got some interesting check marks to it, the check pattern, but I think it works with everything pretty much. And to be honest, it is a little snug on my head. It's kind of a tight seven and a half, to be honest. And there's been some times where I take the hat off and I see like a big red mark across my forehead because it's kind of tight on my forehead. I wore this all the time in high school, even when it was like in April, you know, it's like 50 degrees out, maybe in the sixties, I'd be wearing this. And I'd, uh, I remember I was walking in the hallway in the, uh, music wing, uh, my teacher, Mr. Barnum was a band teacher and he's like, Jeff hat. I'm like, hello, Mr. Barnum. Good. Have a good day. <laughs> Just kind of give him the, uh, to the tip of the cap. You know, that's kind of a old timey thing to do when uh, you walk past another gentleman, you know, good morning, or kind of like this, like a, a nod, but it's more, um, it's kind of more like the street way to tip the cap, but this is more of a proper way to tip your cap. And that was kind of a thing you would also do with the ladies, you know, oh, good morning, ma'am, and all that old timey uh, etiquette. The other really cool part about this hat, now, I've already shown it to you, so it should be no surprise from my previous video. But if you haven't seen it already, the magic trick with this hat, it wouldn't be a winter hat unless it included earmuffs. I thought that was the coolest thing, that it has built-in earmuffs within the hat. It's just like little flaps. To be honest, these really don't do a thing with the cold. They have no insulation. It's just the fabric. But... When it's at least above freezing, these help. And I wear it a lot uh, in these sub-zero temperatures, I don't wear it. But this is always the coolest part and the hat fits better without, or with the earmuffs down. The hat fits better with the earmuffs down. And then it's always a cool thing to, you know, just take the hat off and then flip it in. And then you're, you know, back to the normal hat style. So this one is a really important in my collection. This is my number two hat in the collection. Let's move on to number three, which is what I assume to be my first ever hat. So let's move on to that one. Next. My number three hat is very fitting to who I am as a uh, hat collector and as a sports fan. When I was younger, in about 2000, uh, I got into baseball. And in Chicago, we have two teams, if you didn't know. We have the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago White Sox. Both are very, very historic teams. The Cubs have been around a little bit longer than the White Sox have, but they're both very rooted in baseball history. Very important teams to the whole Major League Baseball system as we know it now. And when you're young in Chicago, when you're about my age, most of the time you're like, I want everyone to win, yay everyone, but after a while it's kind of like, uh, you gotta pick a side kid, and you're usually influenced by your family. I don't know how I was specifically influenced, uh, but I do know that my favorite player at the time was Sammy Sosa, number 21 on 
the Cubbies. This is my first Cubs hat. This is a uh, MLB branded genuine merchandise hat. It's a Velcro adjustable in the back, a uh, crushable unstructured front, even though it, there's like a little buckram to it on the inside here. Uh, it's two-toned with the old school away red bill and uh, blue cap. And my brother, who actually turned out to be a Brewers fan, being uh, contaminated and brainwashed by my dad, who was a Brewer fan also, uh, got a all blue Cubs hat. Personally, when I got this hat, I'm like, this is the official, official Cubs hat. I mean, like the all blue one is okay, but this is the official Cubs hat. To turn out later on learning that the all blue hat is the more official hat. So this hat I got when I was probably in kindergarten to second grade, somewhere around that time. So this would be my first hat that I probably owned, but it's number three in my hat collection. I don't wear it too often anymore. I wore it just maybe once or twice when the Cubs were making their playoff push in 2016, you know, just for good luck. Like, you know, when I was younger, you know, this is my, the roots of my team, roots of my fandom for my favorite team. The Cubs are my favorite team overall, not just baseball, overall. Cubs all the way through, I bleed Cubby Blue, and uh, this hat kind of meant a lot to me. Eventually, I will take this off my hat list, only because when I have a kid of my own, I will make sure that they grow up a Cubs fan too, to love to singing Go Cubs Go. So this will probably be their first hat too. This is hat number three. Let's move on to number four, which might look similar. All right, number four hat in the collection is a hat that I got from my Uncle Mark. I think I was probably in fourth or fifth grade at the time. And it's my first fitted hat, but it wasn't a new era one. It was a brand 47 hat. And it is a, another Cubs hat. This is the 1908, kind of early 1900s Cubs logo that they used with the, the bear and the bat. This was a really special hat for me. I really liked how it had the kind of grungy look to it, kind of like the tattered look. Um, those sweat stains were my own. That's how much you can tell I wore it a lot and how much I didn't take care of my hats. That, you know, I got these nice uh, sweat stains on the side. Uh, nice kind of like white stitched bill here, kind of show a little grunginess. It's like little stitch fringes coming out of the logo. It's not a solid navy blue, but it's kind of like a denim, tattered navy blue, rustic navy blue, you could say. On the back, fitted, Chicago, the old uh, kind of arch uh, script lettering that they would use. And as you can see on the inside, another kind of rustic look. And it is a Cooperstown Collection, brand 47. Brand 47 uh, makes a lot of good dad hats. A lot of good kind of uh, average hats. I mean, New Era makes good hats, but if you just want like a regular hat, 40, Brand 47 makes pretty good ones too. So this is a large, but this is kind of tight on my head, even now as an adult. Uh, this hat I also barely wore after a while when it didn't start fitting, but this hat I wore only a few times during that 2016 playoff push for the Cubbies, just to, you know, my roots of uh, my Cubs fandom, hope, hoping this would help. And it did. So this hat I wore quite a bit to some of my Cubs games in my earlier days. So let's move on to uh, hat number five now.